What's up everybody and welcome back to Desktop Inventions. So it's been a little while since we did an update video on the Ender 3 printing head here. In the last video you guys left some comments in the comment section down below, some upgrades, and I think I got all of them implemented into this version 2 here. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so I have the updated version of the turbo printing head here, uh, printed in white this time, and missed a few things here. I did uh, supports only touching the build plate, so I guess it missed a little pillar that usually comes up here, and a little area around here, and here. Now some of the changes I made in this model, I added this slot here, so when you're assembling the two fans that are wired together, you can get the wires in here, otherwise you had to assemble the fan, feed the wire through a hole here, and then solder it, which is kind of a pain. The other changes, we'll have to get this de-paneled, and I can show you that. And last time I made a video on this, the most requested update was make it big enough to fit a 4020 Noctua fan, so that's what I did here. I increased this front area so we can drop this 4020 fan in there. And it is clearing the uh, BL touch area right here, so no problem there. Additionally, there's some other comments on this of wanting to use a CR touch or a different height hot end or some other things that change the height variable there. So I actually left the original two mounting holes here that are round, and then I added some slots. So if you don't want to use these mounting holes, you can actually use these screw holes in these slots here and adjust it up or down according to your needs. But let's get the old printing head taken apart and get the new one put back together. There's just a few steps here. First we're going to remove this front shroud, then we're going to remove the extruder from the top, and finally the hot end from the base plate. Okay, so now you can start to see the problem with the old design. So these two fans here are hooked together with this Y harness here. And this fan is okay, the wire is coming out this side and it's free to be removed. But this fan, the, the wire is going through a hole in here and there's no way to get that wire out. You either have to desolder this and install the fan and solder this, or you have to uh, break this a little bit. And the new design here fixes that. We have a long slot in here so you can install the wires. So that is way better. Now it's time to dive into the assembly. All right, for the first step, we're gonna slide this 4020 fan up here with the DC converter attached to it, and that'll just screw into place with a couple M3 screws there. Next up was the super fun finger gymnastics challenge of trying to get this BL touch installed. So it's pretty hard to reach. I had to start with the screw nearest to the fan and put the BL touch on there, hold the bottom screw with the screwdriver, and then turn the BL touch out of the way so I could get in there with my finger and drop that nut on there. Then after that, I just had to balance these five items in mid-air until I got the nut started, and then it was easy sailing from there. Then for the second screw, I had to insert it from the bottom there, holding it with my finger, and then holding it with the screwdriver, and then I had to very carefully balance the nut on top while I repositioned, lowered my finger, and held that into place while I got it started as well. Now with that out of the way, we can see the BL Touch is installed, and I left the connector on the inside so I can run the cable to it. So next up here, we're going to install these two Nunchuck 5015 fans that are connected here with this Y harnessing. So these fans actually snap into place pretty nice on the sides here. You can use some screws to hold them in place if you want. And then here, as I mentioned, here's that long slot so we can slide the wire through and install the fan on the right side here. So for now, the wires up here are a mess. We'll get that cleaned up later once we assemble it on the printer. Now time to assemble the hot end onto the printer gantry. So with this base piece printed out here, we'll assemble the hot end on that with M3 screws going through that, and we'll thread those into the nut certs on the mounting plate behind it. Once that's tightened up, I'm gonna feed in these cables to the hot end in this groove on the back side there, and we're gonna drop the Orbiter V2 on top of that. Then it'll be just a couple more M3 screws to install the Orbiter V2. Now it's time to bring the front part of the printing head in, and we'll connect the fan wires and connect the wire for the BL touch there. With all the wires connected, you can take that front cover, put it into place, and kind of massage those wires into place as well. Then we'll bring in the screw and screwdriver from the side to install the first M4 screws. Pro tip to make some of this assembling easier, put a magnet on your screwdriver. So now I've got the four screws actually installed here, and we can start to see the adjustment up and down on that printing head. Here's that adjustment from the front view, so you can see how you can fine tune your fan ducts to your nozzle position. Now with all four screws tightened, that printing head is feeling pretty stable. 
Now with a quick power up here, we can get through the systems check and make sure everything's in place. Now for the printing head topper piece here, we have the supercharged blower with the functioning butterfly flaps. I've been using this printing head topper for quite a while now, so I thought it was time for a new design. So I'm taking a stab at a new robot head design inspired by Clank from Ratchet and Clank. Okay, so I have two different heads printed out here. This one was printed on the CR30, so it has 45 degree uh, angle layer lines, and this one was printed on the Ender 3 here. So while they might look the same here, except for the color, let me assure you there is some difference between these two. So let's get them de-paneled and check it out. All right, so we've got these two prototypes de-paneled, and we spin around to the back here, and we can see the difference is the mounting style. So this first one mounts way up high on top of the extruder, and now that I've got it assembled, I think it looks pretty silly. Here we can see a side profile here, but it kind of looks like he has a giraffe neck. So now the second design was a little more complicated, so it doesn't fit perfectly, but I think it looks a lot better in this position. It looks more like a head on top of some shoulders. So I think we have a winner with this design. But I think the head is still lacking a little bit of life, so we need to add some color into this design. First, I reprinted our robot head here, so the color matches the rest of our printing head here. And I also adjusted the interface in the back, so it fits nicely on our orbiter extruder. So here's a view of how that looks all around from each side. You can see I did have a cutout here for the spring tensioner on the Orbiter V2. Now I was going to take another stab at painting with some acrylic paint to add some green color to the eyes. So the green color I got wasn't very bright, so I tried to mix some white in there, and it didn't look quite right, so I tried to add some yellow as well, and it still wasn't getting the color I liked. I decided to brush on some paint anyways to see how it looked, and really I was not a fan of this green color. Back to 3D printing as a solution. So I had this nice green filament that matches the color perfectly that I wanted. So I got those printed out and put into place, but I found there's quite an ugly texture here that I wanted to clean up. So to do this I used some acetone on a q-tip and I just rubbed those over the front of the eyes for a while until it smoothed everything out. Alright, there we go, now I've got the eyes polished up and looking shiny, now let's get the head put on there. He's looking good now. And here's the final result of our Clank inspired printing head. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment, or subscribe down below. And until then, we'll see you next time at Desktop Inventions.